Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an Italian television series called Anna. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The premise of the movie is set far in the future in a post-apocalyptic timeline. The world has been taken over by a deadly infectious disease called Red Fever. It causes red spots all over the body and kills a person within a few weeks. Its unique characteristic is that it only kills adult humans, leaving the children unaffected. However, the virus remains static in the children's bodies and kills them after puberty when they turn into adults. It also causes infertility, which is currently threatening the existence of mankind. In such a world, a 13-year-old Sicilian girl named Anna lives with her 5-year-old brother Aster in the middle of the woods. They survive off expired food that Anna brings from the city once in a while. The property is surrounded by barbed wire that Aster is not allowed to cross. Anna has told him that the outside world has monsters who will kill him instantly if he gets out. They have been living in such conditions for around five years. The scene cuts to the beginning phase of the red fever. Anna's parents share custody of her, but she likes her father better. One morning, she and her father are playing hide and seek in his apartment. When her mother Maria barges in, she wants to take Anna away to the countryside because of the rapidly spreading red fever. Although reluctant, the father allows Anna to go, promising to meet her on the weekend. Maria's house in the countryside is also in the middle of the woods. She lives with her boyfriend, Damiano, and her infant son, Aster. Anna doesn't like either of them because she thinks they are the reason her parents separated. Maria frequently tries to make Anna get along with Aster, but nothing works. With the spread of red fever turning into an alarming epidemic, Maria and Damiano refrain from going into the city as much as they can. But since the disease hasn't been seen in their city yet, Anna and Aster go to school regularly. One day, the teachers at school are diagnosed with red fever, which causes chaos. The parents come to take their children back home and be safe. Maria is called several times, but she doesn't pick up because she is busy making love to Damiano. In the end, only Anna and Aster are left alone with no word from their parents. Who says sex can't be dangerous? A kind teacher named Angel decides to give them a ride home, although she doesn't know their address. Anna tries to guide her through the streets, but since the house is in the middle of the woods, they get confused and lost. Angel tries calling Maria, but doesn't get a signal on her phone. On stepping out of the car, she witnesses a couple murdering the owner of a restaurant. They approach her and kill her as well. In the end, the siblings are stranded on their own and have to walk home alone. Back at home, Maria discovers a red mark on Damiano's shoulder. She asks him to get out of the house instantly because if she gets the disease too, the children will be left all alone. When Damiano hesitates, she looks at her phone and finds several voice messages from Angel. She immediately goes looking for the children and brings them back. On the weekend, Anna's father comes to visit her, but he is in very bad shape. Maria refuses to let him in, knowing that he will put their lives at risk as well. That evening, Anna sees her father getting back into the car and falling unconscious. Within a few days, everyone gets the disease, including Maria. She knows she doesn't have many days to live, but the thought of her children being left alone scares her. Hence, she starts writing point-by-point -point steps for the kids so they can survive in the new world. The first point on the list says that Anna has to take care of herself and Aster, no matter what. They have to stick with each other and face the challenges together. Back in the present, a grown Anna tells Aster that the trees save them from the outside world and he can only go out once she is dead. Unaware of the concept of death, Aster wishes for her to die quickly. Early in the morning, Anna goes to the city to collect supplies. She ends up in a dark room where she finds a stuffed toy for Aster. The room leads her to a church where many children like her are looking for food and supplies. It turns out that after the death of all adults, the new world is ruled by children. They fight, kill, and trade for food. Anna helps some girls bring out a block of molded cheese from under a heavy box. She gets into an argument with them about who gets to take the cheese. They are also joined by a guy named Pietro. He has two bottles of juice that he is willing to trade for the cheese. However, Anna tricks all of them and manages to get half a block of cheese and both bottles of juice. Suddenly, the place is raided by a group of rowdy kids named the Blue Children. They rob and kill people and are on top of the pyramid in a world without adults. 
Anna and Pietro run for their lives to avoid being robbed. They are chased until they manage to climb a ladder and get to the other side of a library. While Aster's sister is away, he keeps himself busy by running around the jungle, cosplaying as different animals. He notices a jar of olives just outside the fence and tries to retrieve it with a stick. When he accidentally reaches a little further from the fence, he gets scared of the monsters and pulls back. To hide from the said monsters, he uses a garbage bag and covers himself before getting the jar. In the city, Pietro and Anna get away from the blue children and make friends with each other. Rumor has it that the blue children have abducted some adults who can cure the red fever with a kiss. It is said that they do it to maintain their rule in the city, but no one believes them. On the way, Pietro sees a guy on the verge of death with red fever. He stops to help him experience a painless death, but Anna thinks it is useless. Later, he gives her a ride home on his motorbike. Anna refrains from telling him where her house is, but Pietro asks her to come by the beach if she ever wants to meet him again. At home, Aster goes into his parents' former room, where the remains of Maria are still on the bed. Her skull is bedazzled and the bed is full of jewelry. The kid brings out the journal and reads the part where she has explained what they should do if they find packaged food. It says that they have to read the label and figure out the expiry date. If they have no option, they should smell the food, and if it smells bad, boil it. Aster smells the jar, as advised, but doesn't care about the foul scent. A while later, Anna comes home and he excitedly waits for her to show him all the goods she found. She claims that she fought the monsters to get them, just to make sure he won't try to run outside. In the following scene, we see three kids waking up in a dark, cave-like place. They pull on a chain to reveal an adult tied to the other side. It is unclear how the person isn't dead yet and why the kids are keeping her alive. Then, we are introduced to a set of twin brothers named Mario and Paolo. They own a barter store that sells maps and foods in exchange for items. Most of the time, the brothers sell hair supplements disguised as red fever pills and fool people. They always have each other's back, which is why they have managed to survive this long. One morning, the elder twin, Paolo, wakes up with a red mark on his body. They check Mario as well and find out he doesn't have any. It is clear that Paolo has the disease, which means he only has a few more weeks to live. They decide to eat all of their food rations and make the next week the best one of their lives. As his last wish, Paolo claims that he wants to eat ice cream. They have all the ingredients needed except for a refrigerator. Paolo suggests Mario dig a hole in the basement and make it a cellar. After Paolo's death, he can still use it to make ice cream and sell it to people. In the woods, we see Anna and Aster running around, playing, and having fun. Anna has finally learned to love her brother. The next morning, she leaves to collect supplies yet again, but this time, she makes her way to the beach, hoping to meet Pietro. As she had expected, she finds him in a trailer. They swim together and spend the rest of the day talking. Pietro also has a liquid on him that makes people high. The duo ingest it and lay around the beach looking at each other. It turns out they met each other before the epidemic when Anna was dared to kiss him in middle school. While she is enjoying her day, Aster is organizing a party of his own in the woods. He lights a bunch of stuff on fire that creates dense smoke. The dangerous blue children are walking down a path near the woods. They see the smoke rising and follow the path to inspect where it is coming from. Aster is wearing his mother's dress and running around the house when the blue children barge in. They don't do him any harm, but take away all the supplies in the house. A girl even brings out Maria's skull and makes fun of it. The leader of the thugs calls Aster near. The kid is surprised because all his life, he has been told that he and Anna are the only people left on Earth but seeing the robbers in his house changes everything. The leader finds out Aster can read, which means he can be an asset to the group. After cleaning the house of all the supplies, the group makes their way outside. The leader calls Aster to join them, and he follows without question. However, when they ask him to cross the barbed wire, he refuses, scared of the monsters. A chase ensues and ends quickly after Aster climbs a tree. As the others ask him to get down, he crawls on the branch and falls down on the other side of the barbed wire. Initially, the kid panics and imagines himself being chased by the monsters, but when he comes back to his senses, it is clear that he has been lied to his entire life. After finding out the truth, he follows the group without hesitation. A few hours later, Anna returns home and is in utter shock to see the condition of the house, but she is the most worried about her little brother who has gone missing. 
The ashy blue paint on the walls makes it clear that it was raided by the blue children. Still, she looks for him in the woods and falls unconscious out of exhaustion. In her dreams, she gets a vision of her mother, asking her if she is going to look for Aster. As soon as Anna wakes up, she packs her bag and leaves on a search for her brother. Firstly, she meets Pietro and asks him where she can find the blue kids. Since he used to live near them, he knows they will be somewhere in Bagheria. Anna blames him for being the reason for Aster's disappearance before storming away. She then goes to the twins' shop to exchange batteries for a map to Bagheria. Mario receives her and asks her to prove that she is not infected. When she proves it by lifting her top, he lets her in. The guy then reveals that he has captured a Blue Children member who is in the back room. Desperate to find out about her brother, Anna believes him and follows him. However, Mario betrays her and pushes her into the sticky floor. The episode ends as Anna struggles to get up and he laughs at her. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.